said, when we studied Hijaz, somebody asked a question. We learned the song Sabah Nafshi. And we even, I think we'll put it on YouTube. Sabah Fakhri was singing at the Kadu Kamayas on YouTube. And I think one of the gentlemen said to me, towards the end of the class, he says, listen, he goes, it's such a happy song. How could Hajaz be a sad makam and we have a pizmon that's happy? So who remembers how, how we dealt with that question? How can you explain that a sad makam can have a product, a song that has in it a certain sense of joy? No, no, practical answer. This is not a philosophical class. This is a, pra this is a practical... This is a class of professional training. It's very practical oriented. It's not theoretic. It's, it's very practical. So, how do you explain that? Any clues? Anybody? Can somebody think? So, when we spoke about the Makam Hajaz, maybe demonstrate for us Kila Hashem and the Makam Hajaz. And then we'll make it to the Sabah Nashi and see how things transpire. Il a donné un of notes and make it snappy, peppy, happy. That's that's the beauty. And there are even some examples, perhaps, of some pismanim, let's say in Ajam, that are void of a very distinct rhythm and that are very slow, that almost can take a happy sequence of notes and make them sound a little bit slower. And if you have questions you'd like to ask, uh, Dr. Faraj? I just first, first want to say that I actually I visited your website and made mention of sort of found it very helpful. Um, and I saw, actually I've seen it recently and it's changed. I, it's been updated. It had like a red background before and it was yeah. somewhat limited <laughs> now. It's, there's a lot more. Yes, when, when I guess. Uh, in, yes, thank you for noticing. Now, I, I started. Uh, I started.
started the website like two years ago, and I just it was just uh, what I did. I had a program that would just take all the files from my uh, computer. Uh, from my, uh, I had a, uh, I put them all in one uh, folder. I would just take them and just convert them to uh, just convert them into an MP3. You know, just like take the. Yeah. It was very simple. So, but the problem was it's not friend, user friendly. Because you have to do like if that is like 800 songs, so you have to go all the way to the end. So, uh, and in March, I, I uh, started redesigning it into making it into many uh, web pages. That way, you know, you could break it up into your head. You know, you could say, okay, what do I want to learn today? You know, so it's so. And right now, I just finished about a month ago. Uh, I just finished uh, redesigning it. And uh, it's more organized now. You can see, you know, the different sections, different parts, and it's more like reading material. Before it was just only the songs. Now you have some introduction about the makam, about the about the tunes. And actually, last week, uh, if you go on the website, last week I had a, an interview on uh, Arus Sheba about this, about the redesigning of the website. You can see if you listen to it. Um, I think a lot of people will benefit from this website. You know, even people that are not Syrian, people not Moroccan, people that are Ashkenaz, you know, it's it's learning and it's it's a you learn, it's another culture, it's, it's another and it will even if you don't even people I mean you guys here obviously want to learn about music and get A's. <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, even I mean a lot, even people outside here, even people that are, you know, not not familiar with Syrian Sir, tunes, they, they may want to learn about it. They may want to see what experience what it's like. You know, if it, if you just learn one thing uh, in your life, you just go to the same shul your whole life, and you only want to learn that thing. You know, it's going to be you want to have a a rich background, uh, and you, you know, try whenever wherever you go, try to you know. Don't say, okay, I'm Syrian. I'm only going to go to the Syrian shul. That's it. You know, you know they, you know, you may learn something, and you may enjoy it. You may, it may, I mean, it's not only Syrian. You can go go to the Moroccan song, go to the Moroccan shuls. Or each one will have a different. And when you go visit them, you will see the this connections between all of them. There might be, you know, the they might be, it might sound different, but they may be things that are similar. And you will maybe you will appreciate. It. Or can we download off the website? Yes, you can download all the songs. And it's free. It's, it's free, okay. completely free. There's no, no charge. Uh, it also has holiday songs, songs that we sing in different occasions. Break me that wedding. Um, uh, Shabbat songs. Shabbat songs. Yeah, I mean, I have to. They're part of the Pismoni section. I have to uh, at some point put them on. The, I have a Shabbat section. But uh, I have to put some of the songs, like, you know, Keshmer Shabbat or, you know, Derori Kra, all those songs, put them on the on the Shabbat section, maybe, you know. But a lot of them are going to be... Uh, yes. Uh, on, under the holidays, you go to the high holiday section, I have about uh, 60 recordings on the for the high holidays. Uh, I mean, right, right now we're about two months from the high holidays, but, uh, but for next year, you know, you can listen listen to all the songs that we sing. There's a lot of beautiful songs that we sing in Sayyidi Chod, on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. Um, you know, how do, how do we see it? You will learn, you will learn a lot from the website. Any other questions? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so I was just wondering, um, when you were starting out, do you have any uh, advice for people looking, besides for those that listen to the songs, but is there anything in particular that helped you become an advanced Chazan? Um, uh, in addition to just listening to the songs and uh, anything focusing on that you focus on specifically, right? Okay, that's a very, very, very good question. Uh, well, what you try, what I try to do is, uh, if you want to learn the music professionally, and you guys are learning it here, uh, when you the reason you do a makam, you know, you do all the songs in the makam, and you have to listen to it a lot, and then you you start to hear. They, they have very similar notes. Okay? Now, you try to... So, what I would say is, when you start on a comment, and you, you can go, you can find...
find the notes for the makam. And you can hear them. They hear and hear with playing you, the notes. Saying, you can hear the notes. And basically, you need to learn the notes and then learn songs in that note. And it's Hazanut is about patience. And you can't learn it. You can't learn it in one day. You can't learn it in one class. You need years. And you don't expect to get better in, in one, one day or one year. You know, so it's something you should try to learn over a lifetime, and you'll get better. You know, as much the more you listen, some songs you listen to them. You have to listen to some songs that I've listened to them at least a thousand times. You know, five hundred. Five hundred, yes. <laughs> the more you listen to it, the more you see the similarity. And if you really like, them, what I try to do is right now I, uh, I, I every week I'm the Hazan in, in a shul. And that week, so what I do is, let's say I know this week is Hijaz, so I, what I try to do is I try to listen to a lot of Hijaz songs for the week to get you in the, in the mood, to, to help you, set you up. So when you go up, if you're the whole week, you're listening to Siga, and then you go up to say uh, Hijaz, you know, you know. But uh, what I try to do is I try to listen to as many songs as possible, uh, go over the notes, and over time, you you will improve. You will see improvement. Did you have to learn music, music theory to that, or did you? Um, I never had the uh, like uh, learn the music theory like uh, in a class where I got you know got a degree and uh, learned. You know, I think that's a very good thing. But a lot of times, people don't have the opportunity. People, you know, people, you know, as, unless you're becoming a musician, uh, it's very hard to. I mean, you could. I think that's the best to, to learn the notes, to learn it, to learn it through the notes. If you play an instrument, people that play instruments, you know, the piano, the guitar, you know, or oud, or you know, all, all kinds of instruments. It's. Mm -hmm. it's uh, I think. I think he wants to know how long does it take for somebody to get to the point where they can be at least an amateur. Yeah. That's his question. Oh, and, okay. and, and, and in order to really take his answer is an excellent answer, but to really get a better gauge on it, it also depends on where you're yeah. starting from. Yeah. But assuming all things being equal, you're starting from a similar point of accomplishment, there's a curve. There's a curve that you can achieve by doing this constant practice every week. At what point do you get to a level where you don't need to, to listen to Hijaz all week to be able to do on Shabbat? You can just go up and do this great Hijaz out of the pocket. Yeah. That, that, you're talking 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. You're talking dec maybe a decade or two of growth. Yeah. To get to that point. So I was point. wondering maybe like there was a specific routine that you did or something you focus on specifically when you're listening to the music. Not just listen to the music, but the way, did you focus on the way he went, first went up and then went down and then, or like, I don't know if there was anything in particular that you focused on. Right. So, the uh, other thing I find is that people in the, in the, let's say you're studying for a year, okay? You're listening to the songs in one maqam, the hijab, right? When you first listen to it, they sound so different, you know. You can't you can't say, oh, this is Hijaz, you know. But you get to a certain point when you've listened to Maqam so many times, you're the, it's like this. The curve is like this, and then it's like, like you said, like, uh, like so. Let's say you're past that point. Huh? You're past that point where you can recognize well, the song. That's where theory, music theory comes in. If you have a strong base in music theory, at a certain point, all the Hazanu techniques. The pismonim and the makams and the scales going up and the scales going down okay. fit into some intellect intelligent pattern, and that's when the curve goes. That's, yeah, that's, that's I mean, I, I was formally trained in, in music and piano from age six, and I also took quite a few music theory courses in college and undergraduate. So although I wasn't a professional musician, I had the base theory. So I didn't know anything about it in the context of Hazanut. But when I had already applied all my knowledge of Ajam and Nahuan and Ajaz, and then I said, oh, wait a minute, this fits in to the pattern of music. Ajam is like the major, Nahuan is like the minor. And the theories of major and minor apply to everything you'd want to do in Hazanut. All of a sudden, it's like, you know, the body gets in the Shema. All of a sudden, it, it takes on a whole dimension. That's when the learning curve goes really through the roof, so to speak. The thing is, a lot of people get discouraged try and learn it down because of this, this curve they, you know they don't reach this curve you know they you know they drop out like here you know but he the thing is you should try to learn